Krishna Maharaj. Good afternoon and welcome to Mid Monday Ministry Moments with Marie. It's so glad to be with you and um, share this time with you for another session, another study. Um, I welcome first timers. I welcome those who um, continue to be with me each um, and every week that tune in, that pray for me, um, that give me stars and encouragement, and that pass the word on. Amen. Hope you had a good week and a good weekend. The Lord blessed us despite the storm. He still blessed us. Amen. We didn't have um, the damage that some had, and I am grateful. And for those that did have the damage, um, we have prayed for their recovery. Let us pray and get into the word. It's a good word. I always say that every week. It's just gooder and gooder and it gets better and better. Amen. So, Father, thank you for this time that we come together to share your word. Um, thank you for the revelation of your word and how it is so um, applicable to our lives. I am so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I pray that this word reaches far beyond even my imagination, that the tentacles will, will, will reach wide and long and high. Amen. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. Lord, you're my strength and you are my redeemer. Amen. And as always, at the end, I um, will post out on YouTube. So, today's subject is staying in line with God. Amen. And it is found in the book of Micah, which is in the Old Testament. The sixth chapter, 6a, the verse 6a and verse 8. And it reads like this. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and high bow myself before the high God? He has shown the old man what is good. And what doeth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God? Mmm, good stuff. So let's get into this study. Really, what is the book of Micah, the sixth chapter, the sixth verse, A, and the eighth verse, saying or asking? The answer is clear and crisp with a single sub summary of what God expects from you and me and the believer, who are the believers. This particular passage of scripture refers to Micah's mandate, where God requires and wants to see these things activated within us. What three things specifically? Justice, kindness, and humility. We are to treat everyone justly, fairly, and respectfully. We are not to oppress or mistreat others. We are not to abuse the power over other people's property, their freedom of, or their freedom of their lives. Amen. Just because we have the power, that doesn't give us the permission to do that. God orchestrated the life of Moses to become the deliverer for the Hebrew people who were held in slavery by Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And he proves the statement that I just said is true because Pharaoh's belief was cold-hearted, it was prideful, it was authoritative, there were acts of um, executions causing grief and hurt and hostility and he embodied, Pharaoh did, everything that God hates in a man. That's what he embodied. And because of that, because they were God's people, he sent the delivering, deliverer into Egypt to bring his people out. Because the Bible says, all souls are mine. Even the one that has not claimed him as savior, that soul still belongs to him. It's just that if he doesn't repent, um, then he will be lost, he or she. 
So let's look at kindness. Kindness extends one's goodness to help the poor, the hurting and the downtrodden. Um, the Bible says that real ministry um, is not a fanfare. It's not the lights, camera, and action. But it's when we help the poor, when we help the children who are fatherless, when we go and we help the widows, the ones that are in prison, the ones that are downtrodden, the ones that may never reciprocate back to you what you're able to do for them. The Bible says, now that's real ministry. Amen. So let's remember the Good Samaritan who helped a stranger who was described as a traveler who had just, um, who had been beaten and robbed by thieves. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing new under heaven. What is happening now happened then. And these people that beat him and robbed him left him half dead. They had no conscience. They didn't care. You got it. I want it. And I'm going to take it. Mm -hmm. Now the priest. Man of God. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to expound on that. I'm just going to read it. The priest. Who he saw him. The priest saw the man on the ground. Beaten up. Probably bleeding. Crying out for help with a whimpering voice, just passed on by him. Didn't try to help him. Didn't even pray for him. Well, if he prayed for him, maybe he prayed for him as he walked away. Mm -hmm. Now, the Levite was worse than the priest. So sometimes these titles that we carry, um, we don't live up to the expectation of what they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So the Levite was worse than the priest. He looked, he looked on the beaten man. So he was in his proximity. He was close to him. He could see he was in pain. He was beaten. He was ailing. He was crying out for help. He passed by him, but he crossed over on the other side of the street. I guess he felt no one saw him. But God sits high and he looks low. He sees everything. Now, there was a certain kind of Samaritan. He was kind and he was different. He was a Samaritan. And when we look at history, the Samaritans were looked down on. They, they, they weren't the prominent people like the Hebrews or the Jewish people or the Israelites. Oh, no. They were, they were the underdogs. Does that kind of resonate with you? Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's that underdog that has the compassionate heart that Christ has. Who had compassion on this wounded man. He's the one that had the compassion. So what did he do? Well, let's look at what he did. He bound up his wounds. Mm -hmm. Whatever he had, a handkerchief, tore part of his robe off. But whatever it was, first he stopped the bleeding. Amen. Because as long as this man was bleeding, he was losing life. Mm -hmm. So he stopped the bleeding. Then he set him on his beast, which means it was probably a donkey. Um, he put him on his donkey, which in our day, he would be put in our vehicle. Amen. But he stopped the bleeding first. Took him to a hotel. Mm -hmm. And took care of him. Didn't just take him and drop him off. Didn't just take him to an emergency room and say, hey, I found this man on the road. And, you know. Here he is. Do what you can do for him. Because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes there are cases where people are dropped off and, um, you know, they help them, but they don't get the care and, and the compassion that they need. Why? First of all, do you have insurance? Mm -hmm. So this Samaritan was his insurance. Continues. 
it says, upon the Samaritan's departure, he, had, he, he was on uh, an assignment to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But he took the time to stop and help this stranger. He asked the people at the hotel, um, would you please take care of him mm -hmm. until I return? So if he needs breakfast or lunch or dinner, or if he needs band-aids or some salve or whatever, if you will comply with that, then when I return, I will pay the bill. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I had to search myself. Amen? Because he really went out of his way to be generous, to be kind. He, he ex displayed mercy. Amen? And he became justice for this man. Maybe you were beat up and mistreated for whatever the cause, but I'm here now. Look, can you see the attributes and characteristics of God in this story? He said, I'll pay the bill and whatever else is owed on the bill, I'll make sure I pay it in full when I return. Amen. And so that gave those people at the hotel, um, to me, it softened them to want to take care of him, to address his needs, and not, well, I don't know if we're going to get the money or not. He didn't leave no credit card on file. But he told them his word was his bond. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 32 says it like this. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Colossians 3 and 12 speaks on this matter. It says, put on, therefore, put it on, carry it, hold it. As the elect of God, this is what we should be carrying. This should be our mantle. This is who we should be. Mm -hmm. Holy. And beloved. Bowels of mercy. Kindness. Humbleness of mind. Meekness and long-suffering. I tell you, this, this is not just a study of, of um, you know, scriptures and stories, but this is a self-reflecting reflection, whether you have a title or not. But if you are in the kingdom, if you are a believer, these are the mandates that God requires. Amen? The third requirement... Um, is, is humility. Mm -hmm. And humility is when you become humble. And, I, and I'll tell you something. Humility is not just an overnight process. Um, we say we're humble or we we have um compassion for our brothers or sisters especially when commercials come on the tv and they show the little kids starving or they're being or the uh animals of dogs and things the owners just left them outside in the snow or whatever but humility is action it's what we do as well and not just what we see and that it affects us or what we say, but it is what we do. So we are required to walk humbly first with God. Mm -hmm. That's where it starts. And, when, and because we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity, it takes time to become humble to totally submerge 
and submit yourself to God. And don't let us have um, uh, uh, a job in the secular world that carries prestige and power. What did the um, when the rich man um, uh, God he asked God the Jesus you know how how can I get this salvation you talking about? He said sell everything you have and give it to the poor. And then follow me because he was bragging. Well, I give to the poor and, you know, and I do this and I do that. He said, yeah, but I need you humble. And so the humility starts with me. You sell all that stuff and then follow me. Mm -hmm. So we're to walk humbly with God. What? So what does that look like? Walking humbly with God. First of all, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. Because being about me denotes pride. And, you know, I, at first, I, it took me a long time to kind of really um, ration that. Well, how can it be about pride? I mean, I want to be good to myself. And, you know, we, we think about self all the time. I'm living my best life. I'm doing what's... You know, what's good? I'm in Christ now and I'm highly blessed and favored and it's all about me. But what about somebody else? What about those who don't have what you have? And we're always going to be blessed. Bible said, he said, if you just walk up right before me and do what I ask you to do, I will withhold no good thing from you. So we're always going to be blessed. We don't have to brag on the blessings. We just have to be the blessing. Amen? And then share the blessing. So it's not about me. It's all about Jesus. What is the 66 books about? Jesus. And it amazes me the love affair that God and Jesus, the Father and the Son, had. Because the Father introduced the Son in Genesis and he wraps it up about his son and revelation. So all in between there, it was the father and the son. Mm -hmm. Amen. I don't think less of myself. I think of myself less. Mm -hmm. So it's not all about me. It's not all about, oh, well, what can I do? You know, the, I was reading in the scripture um, about the man that, that had so much. And he said, well, what am I going to do with all this stuff? He said, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear this barn down and bigger, build a bigger barn and put my stuff in. And I, I said to my husband, I said, oh, maybe the Lord sent me a message. Amen. Time stopped spending so much. Amen. But I don't think less of myself. I just think about myself less. I think about others now. Amen. And how can I help? And sometimes it's... You know, um, sometimes we can't physically help, but there's DoorDash now. There's, you know, you can send money through, um, what is it, Zelle? And um, I forget the other one. But there's all kind of ways that we can help someone. Amen. I strive to be a good listener rather than a talker. Because if you're always talking, 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 you can't absorb anything. If you're always talking, 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 it's about me, blah, 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 blah. When are you going to take time in meditation and prayer and let God begin to change your language so that you can open up your ears and listen? I strive to be a giver rather than a taker. Amen? So even... Um, sometimes at, at, at the birthday, the kids will say, well, mama, what do you want? And I say, you know what? I, I have so much. What I want is memories. So I'm going to give of myself to you, and I want you to give of yourself to me. Sometimes, especially now, that means more to me than some of the um, things that they can buy me. To have the memory, to have the laugh, to have the unity, to 
to have the fellowship, to have the fun, to talk about, you know, when you were little and, and pull out the pictures and, you know, suck together and eat. And just about everyone now can cook, you know, and have cook-offs and think that. And then to listen to them, listen to the world now that they live in and the things that they face. Yes, um, I strive um, to be a servant rather than a boss. So one might ask, how do these three traits work together to keep one staying in line with God? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you. They will help you to love your neighbor as yourself. They will guide you to walk humbly and upright before the law, the Lord. They will assist you in wishing, speaking, or doing ill towards your neighbor. They will assist you in speaking or doing ill. So, in other words, you won't speak ill of your neighbor, nor will you do ill. Because if you're practicing kindness and humility and justice, you're not going to you're not going to want to hurt that other person. Amen. They will guide you to seek justice over wrong, even if you stand alone. And sometimes we do. My father used to always say, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And he said, and if you're standing and you're proven wrong, then change your position. Amen. We have the ability to do that. But, but don't, if it's wrong, don't just go along with it. Amen. And sometimes we get in trouble with our children. We get in trouble with our spouse or people who are close because we don't agree with that position. Amen. But if it's right, it's just right. If the Bible says it's right, I will stand on it. I'm going to still love you, treat you good, but I stand for right. They will undergird you to love the unlovable. When you execute that, the, the humility and the justice and the meekness and the kindness, you will be able to love the unlovable. And that doesn't just come overnight. That comes with your walk with Christ. Amen. They will work harmoniously with decisions to seek right above wrong. Forgiving others who trespass against you. And that's a whole mouthful. But you got to be anchored in him to actually forgive those who maliciously hurt you. They're out on the prowl to do you wrong. Hey, ask me how I know. Amen. Took me a while to get there, but I'm here now. These three traits... Justice, kindness, and humility elevates a heart of love. That's what it does. That part of the heart that has not totally submitted to God's will, it will get in there, flesh out the old, and put in the new. Amen? When we dutifully, dutifully, that means continuously, not do it today and not, and you know, forget about it tomorrow, next week, and down the line. But when we dutifully operate as the word instructs us, we can ask what we will, and the Lord will grant our request. Why? Because you're in his will. Mm -hmm. you, you have right standing with him. Amen. And you're not going to ask for something crazy. What would it be me asking for a Bentley? I go to the supermarket and there wouldn't, not only would there not be a car, but if I had a driver, they'd take the driver too. Amen. Praise the Lord. He will give us the good of the land. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter about, um, well, you know, the farmers had a bad year and the, the, uh, the, the forest, all the trees burned down. We ain't going to get all that paper and, you know, so forth. It doesn't matter. Wherever the land is good, and there's a whole lot of land in this world, we're going to reap from the good of the land. He will make our 
enemies our footsteps. He will rebuke the devourer for our names, for his name's sake, mm -hmm. for our name's sake. He will hear us when we call and answer by and by. Amen. There was a song that says we need to have a little talk with Jesus. He will hear our humble cries and answer by and by. Now, these three traits will delight and satisfy God. And when God is satisfied, the Son is satisfied, the Holy Ghost is satisfied, and we are blessed. Amen. Now, if for some reason or another, you don't have sure footing on your actions, you haven't reached this pinnacle yet. Mm -hmm. of these three mandates that Micah talks about. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 has a declaration or a resource that we can use. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and in all all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So let's close this out. And and um I I I was just amazed when um I got this revelation. So 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 let's let's close it out. These are experiences we encounter that reveal significant principles. There are life experiences that we encounter that they do. They, they, they reveal significant principles that can be applied to different life situations. Mm -hmm. I am reminded of what one such experience in my life. Um, I received this when I was in meditation with the Lord one afternoon. For my husband and I, we have a reoccurring account with the car wash. Amen? With the plan that we have, we can use this facility seven days a week, 365 days a year. We can go back and forth 10 times a day if we want. The only time we can is with the exception of holidays. Mm -hmm. But the spiritual part of it is what um, amazed me, consumed me, kind of opened my eyes to deliver this word. In my time of meditation, I aligned the operation of the car wash with the principles of Staying in line with God. Here we go. Strap up. When my, vehicle, when my vehicle becomes dirty from traveling, I pull off the road, get off that big I-4, mm -hmm, and enter in the area where it indicates the beginning of this car wash process. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as travelers, mm -hmm, as men and women of God, we do get weary. And if we don't watch, we'll get dirty. Mm -hmm. So, there is a line. Once you pull off and you get ready to enter in to where the process will occur, there is a line on the ground that leads up to the opening of the car wash, guiding the driver or the believer that will take the vehicle to the entrance needed to get the wheels on the right track. Because, see, you just can't come to him any old kind of way. Mm -hmm. Amen. There is a way that we approach him. We don't come pridefully or look what I've done or die to die or dee dee dee. But there is a certain way you got to line up before you can enter to, into that throne room. Okay, so the next instruction 
requires one to put the vehicle in neutral. Once you line those wheels on that track, mm -hmm, then you put the vehicle in neutral and take your hands off the steering wheel and your foot off the brake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because see, he's getting ready to do something. You, we're not in control when he cleanses us. We're the recipients of it. Amen? Oh, I could, I could do, preach this thing. As the track moves the body of the vehicle through the process, the first order is the cleansing process. Hey! You can't go to him being dirty. Amen? You can't go to him with malice and hatred in your heart. You can't go to him and you just done cussed somebody out and didn't even ask for forgiveness. You can't go to him with, with, um, with, with the seven things that he hates. You know, you run and, and, and tell lies and, and want to uh, put people out on um, front street not even knowing the situation. You can't just go to him like that. So the first thing is, you got to humble yourself. You got to take your hands off the wheel and off the brake. And say, Lord, forgive me. Wash me clean. The cleansing process. And the cleansing process starts with the soap. Mm -hmm. Which is a cleansing and emulsifying agent. Completely covers the car and when i looked at looked up that word emulsifying agent that means there are two ingredients that would never come together on its own mm -hmm. but he puts the father the son and the holy ghost together on your behalf because mm -hmm. see they're not coming if first the father don't say he or she got to be cleansed. So two, two things come together to make that soap, to make those bubbles. Amen. And it will completely cover you while you're going through on the right track, which is the, t uh, takes the, the take, let's see, the car while this is taking place. The driver or the servant can pray, having access now to the throne room. Mm -hmm. So while you're sitting there idle, because you're not driving, you don't have a control now of the vehicle at all. You need to be praying and not thinking about, you know, well, I, you know, I got an appointment next month or next year or next week or tomorrow. I'm supposed to be doing that and the other. No, you need to get yourself right. Amen. So once soaked, mm -hmm, huge brushes sweep the sides, the top, the back, the front, and the undercarriage of the vehicle. He's he going to wash you clean. He's not going to leave any stone unturned. Amen. For when he cleanses you, you'll be whiter than snow. He Glory. Glory. Hezekiah Walker penned the song that says, Won't he make you clean inside? Yes. And then Psalm 51 and 7, David says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. I shall be clean. Wash me. Mm hmm. A ask God, take out that stuff. Take out that hatred that I have, that lying tongue that I have, that evil look that I have. Take it out. When I run, let me run with the word and not with gossip. Let me be able to forgive those that trespass against me, that do evil and harm me. Hey, why? Because I represent you. So they're not really fighting or being nasty to me, but they're trying to reach around and do you harm. Satan is a lie. Amen. 
He says, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Then comes the rent cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you ain't finished yet. And sometimes we get up before he finishes the process. And what happens? We become worse. If we told one lie, now we're telling two and three lies. If we had evil looks, then now both eyes is cockeyed, looking evil. Stay there. Stay on your knees. Stay at the altar. Stay in prayer until he finishes the process. So now we're gonna, he's going to rinse us. So the rinse cycle, Jesus will wash away, rinse all that impurity that's in you. All that sin that's in you. He will rinse it. Once he washes you, then he rinses you. Once cleansed, then a sealant is applied. Uh -huh. So if you leave too early, you, you don't get the sealant. Mm -hmm. And you're going to need that sealant when you go back out in that dirty world. Why did we come to the car wash? Because the car was dirty. Mm-hmm. But the dirt, the dirt was on the car, but the dirt didn't have us. Why? Because we, we are sealed to the day of redemption. So, yeah, we, you know, things happen and we get sad. We can cry. You know, we, we can say some things we shouldn't have to, but it won't stick. Mm-hmm. Just go back through the, through the process. But wait on your calling. The Bible says wait on your ministry. Get everything you need before you go out into that dirt. Amen? So, the process continues with drying. Because you ain't finished yet. He wants to dry that sealing, sealant on you. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Not just get a little touch. Oh, 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 I got touch. I, I, I'm better now than I was before. Well, you ain't saying too much. You need to be baptized in it. Amen. If the Bible says that the um, elect of God will scarcely make it in, you better get all you can. You might have come out and go back in again. Amen. Amen. The process continues with the drying. Blowing away any residue that might try to stay. And when you when when the car goes through, you know, there's a groove where the windshield wiper is. And sometimes a um a leaf, especially if it's a baby leaf, with all that process, it'll 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 get wedged in there. But when you go through that blower, it blows them all out. Stay in the process. Stay on the track. Let him guide you through. He knows just um, the amount of soap you need. He knows just amount, the amount of water to rinse you. He knows how to dry you. He knows just the amount of Holy Ghost needed to take you on your journey. Mm -hmm. He knows what to do. So he blows away the residue. So coming back because the Bible says he's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. So if that if you leave before he blows uh, you dry after the ceiling, then you got a wrinkle. You got a spot. Mm-hmm. So when the bridegroom comes, I sure help, help, hope you got that oil. And don't ask me for none of mine. Amen. Praise the Lord. At the end, when you get to the end of the process. A yellow light will appear. And it and it says pause. So I I looked up, I said, in scripture, what does the yellow, what does yellow mean? Oh, well, to my surprise. Yellow represents the presence of God. He said, Well, where's that found? Deuteronomy 4 and 24. And the purification through fire. Where is that found? Well, 1 Peter 1 and 7. So when you go through that whole process, 
you have the presence of God. You ever hear people testify and say, you know, maybe when in their former life, they frequent clubs or, you know what, and if you go in one, and the people say, well, what you doing in here? You don't belong in here. Why? Because there is a certain glow you have. The Bible said we are light. His light shines through us. So you got the presence of God coming out that car wash and you are purified and you got fire. Yeah. You can slay some demons. Amen. You, you can put your hands on, on those that are sick. Say call for the elders of the church. Mm -hmm. And they will hit the, through the process that you went through. Now God can work through you and they will be healed. So. Here's the end. Yeah, I'm just getting started. The light changes. Mm -hmm. And now it's green. And it says go. And green represents pasture. It, it's, it's a new beginning. Amen. So every time you go through that car wash, it is a new beginning. The Bible says the harvest is plentiful. Yeah, all, all plentiful. Mm -hmm. But you can't go out there because your car is dirty. You got mud on your wheels. The, the windshield wipers is not taking off that smudge that's on there. Uh-huh. So go on the battlefield for the Lord. Just make sure your vehicle has gone through the process. Amen. Oh, I enjoyed this. I could. I could just go on and on and on, but I have to stop. Thank those who are on with me. Um, Sandra Petty, who is our good friend. We love her. Apostle Scott, love you dearly. Um, Annie Brazil, you have been with me a long time, even when I was a district missionary back home. Thank you for continuing to believe in me. Sharon Shed uh, Cedric. Um, she has been with me. Uh, these are my, these, this is what we say, these are my girls. Amen. Thank you for continuing to believe in me. Nora Cardozi, we met uh, at the BSF um, class that I teach now. And um, this, she just become a part of my heart. Love you dearly. Nora uh, Peacock, that's my cousin. That's my cousin. And I love, she's got a heart of gold. And I thank you for believing in me to follow me. And then there is Joanne Johnson. Thank you. She's my new friend. Amen. And she's part of this family. And I pray for all those who will come in later on. Um, my children usually come in when, it's, when they're going home. They pop me in um, on their radio or whatever, however they get me on their tablets. But I thank God. Continue to pray for me. Um, I'm, I mean heaven all the way. And, and I, I want to do the will of God. Amen. So pray for me. I have enjoyed this. Um, next month, I'm going to try to do a series. I want to get it together before I announce it. But stay tuned because the Lord is going to take us higher and higher in his word. Until next week, you pray for me as I pray for you. And I want to send a shout out to my husband because he does all the engineering stuff behind the scenes. Thank you, babe. Love you. God bless.